Hey, everybody, welcome to an impromptu episode of the Elseworlds Exchange. Uh, I am Sal, and I'm joined today by Ryan Stegman and his amazing friends. <laughs> uh, from us. the Actually, from the Segman and his amazing friends. Uh, but yeah, we're very excited to talk about so much that's going on. Uh, but more importantly, let's go around the room, introduce yourselves, and uh, talk about what you do. And uh, in case anyone is new to this whole thing and isn't, mm -hmm. in, in, and isn't aware mm -hmm. of your show and, 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 and what we're talking about. Okay. Ryan Stegman, what do you do? Yeah, who are, are you? you? Yeah. Uh, see, I'm that guy. See that <laughs> signature? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm Ryan Stegman. <laughs> I draw Vanish for Image Comics that's being solicited shortly, if it's not available for pre-order yet. Mm -hmm. um, and I've drawn Venom and, you know, some mm -hmm. other stuff. I don't Seriously? know. And Venom-esque Venom characters, you yeah. know. Yeah. And the rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Spider-Verse. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm Griffin Sheridan. I have been one of two um, supple interns of uh, Mr. Ryan Stegman for several years now, and we accompany him on these sorts of adventures. And we've been uh, working tirelessly over at KLC Press to bring uh, a bunch of folks um, sneak peeks into Vanish as, uh, as it's getting made and everything, and uh, a bunch of other cool stuff along the way. And I'm, I'm, by... I'm, I'm Ethan. I'm the other one. Control V. Everything he just said. <laughs> <laughs> I like seeing chains in the chat, by the way. It's nice to yeah, know chains that chains in the chat, chat for uh, for the KLC press. That's yeah, right. KLC press. Uh, congrats, by the way, of course, on um, the, the, the launching of KLC. We're what? Over mm -hmm. a year into mm -hmm. your 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 production and uh, and the Substack deal. Coming up on it. Oh, we yeah, we're not quite August. there yet. Yeah, are we, are, we, are, we, are, you, are you planning anything like like oh man it's been a year here we go uh i'm not dying right now <laughs> all right <laughs> uh. not dying right before the finish line you know vanish is 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 coming down the pipeline um yes. We got that. We just started a new educational series with Mr. Stegman here over on KLCPress.com. So that's been something that we've been excited about, and we're happy to finally get that out to the folks. Um, yeah, talk about that. What's the uh, education? What do, what do you mean? Like, is it um, like art instru instruction? Is it uh, business acumen? Like, is it all a mixture of all of them? Yeah. Well, we, don't, we don't have the second part. But <laughs> it's, it's, uh, people can ask me questions about drawing and then i just do little demos and you know just you know anybody that's interested in that that aspect of comics uh yeah. can learn a lot from that so yeah mr stegman's a wealth of knowledge and i think he has a knack for teaching um and so that's been fun uh to see what folks want to hear from him hashtag stegman speaks on our uh, social media if you want to get your question in there right. um and uh yeah, he, he he knows exactly how to break it down, I think, for folks that are at any sort of point along their career, you know, if they're just starting out or if they've got a little bit of experience. Ryan's really good about finding a way to tell everybody how to do it his way. <laughs> yeah, the best. Because <laughs> he's the best. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are we're close to a year into KLC Press uh, mm -hmm. and, its, and its existence. I got a chance to read... Um, the uh, the preview for Vanish, thanks to uh, I think the comicbook.com launch, uh, if not also through the Substack itself, because of course your Substack uh, for KLC uh, provides behind the curtain details, uh, exclusive mm -hmm. podcasts, and of course the, uh, the the aforementioned preview of Vanish. We, we we've referenced it a lot. Let's talk about Vanish, pitch it, and then uh, mm -hmm. we can talk about other other stuff around it. Um, where did the right. idea where did where did the whole like genesis of vanish come from like because I, I understand like that with substack and that situation it was like these are all ideas that maybe would have come to fruition at some point down the pipeline but thanks to the substack situation you were able to advance that substantially and be like let's do it now like let's 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 get started with this right. what is it and where and and where did it come from it kind of came from our podcast because donnie kate's uh our intrepid writer, um, he started complaining about Harry. He went on this big uh, rant about Harry Potter and how uh, <laughs> things that were wrong with it. He's on okay. the record. It's in our podcast. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, it was like we, we had been working on a creator-owned idea, and it wasn't really gelling. We both kind of felt like, I don't know, like it's not coming together. And then he, he calls me, and he's like, hey, what if – because one of his big complaints was like the Death Eaters just go away. <laughs> and he's like and they just are you know fine whatever and uh he's like 
let's do that story. Like, a, you know, it's, so it's essentially, you know, Harry Potter meets Inglorious Bastards, a revenge story about, you know, the, the grown up chosen one uh, trope who, you know, when he was a kid, he saved the world. Uh, and now he's all grown up and he was like a child. He's like a child star, like a Danny Bonaducci. <laughs> but, uh, That's know, a great he's... timely reference. I love yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> he, um, yeah, really. <laughs> the kids love Danny Bonaduce. Like. Uh, but he's, uh, yeah, he's 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 hunting them down, and you know, there's, there's, there's lots of twists and turns about what's really going on, and it's very um, cerebral. And uh, sometimes I like to say it's just it's more of Donnie and my bullshit that we do, which is ah. you know emo, sort of uh, <laughs> horrific, violent, um, you know. There's a heart to it, but it's still very, uh, you know, very violent and very adult. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, as it should be. Um, mm -hmm. I think that and, that and that speaks to the origins of your uh, of, of your interests. Um, there's no you're, you're no stranger to the fa to fandom towards uh, characters that that uh, appear in alleyways yep. that uh, <laughs> wield chains. We start, we, start this, this, we start this book off right in the alley. I actually, I nixed the rain. We were going to have it. Rain. Oh. Like, right. <laughs> did you nix the rain because it's a pain in the ass to render? Or did you nix it because you were like, that's too far. It's too on the head. It's too, it's, it's too. Uh... It's not too hard to render for me. It's all the, it's the ink and colorists that have to deal with just, it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, we, um, we, we, I just took it out. Cause I was like, you know what? We'll, we'll save it. For, we'll save the rain for a big moment. You know? Yeah. Story. <laughs> that's fair yeah there's nothing yeah. better than when like things are getting heated and then suddenly boom rainstorm yeah. Mm -hmm. it's like, yeah mm -hmm. that's across the board movies comics doesn't matter um but yeah so uh do you envision vanish to be like a mini a maxi or you're you're like this is one of those things this could be like walking dead where i just don't stop <laughs> yeah i don't want to stop i mean i i have some contractual obligations with marvel but you know we're gonna figure this this all out and uh I want it to be ongoing. So if it's doing well, um, you know, it can go on. It, the, the story is completely open-ended. I know how the first eight issues, I know what happens at the end of the eighth issue and we haven't plotted past that because you have to see how it's doing. You don't want to like, you know, just assume, right. but uh, we, it's completely uh, open to new stories beyond issue eight. So, right. um, I mean, there's a, it's a very final issue eight, but it's also got, direction for a little more oh yeah, yeah absolutely yeah uh did this uh kind of get you kind of light a fire and make you want to do more creator own work or is this kind of like i want to do this with donnie and then and then we'll see where we go from there oh i i mean i was just talking i mean i i love it i love doing stuff you know i mean it, it's been a slow process because there's a lot more moving parts there's um you know you're kind of running a, a small business essentially yeah um so there's you know all of a sudden I have like meetings and, you know, stuff that I don't normally have to do. My favorite, you know, the thing I want to do is draw. So yeah. there are things that kind of get in the way, but I think that once the book starts coming out and the machine is moving, uh, I don't think that I'll have to do as much of that stuff. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I, I think that it's, it's super gratifying and I, yeah, I would love to do it forever. Cool. Uh, Oh, good. Ryan's got a nice little idea in his back pocket that we're Ethan and I are aware of that we're very excited about. Oh, but Ryan's we, got ideas. Oh, Ryan's an, <laughs> idea. Ryan's an idea, man. So. I do have. I, I, I think that what there's. I'm not going to say much about it, but I do have another image project that I am uh, co-writing and having a friend draw. Um, no. That that it you know it will be coming out. We haven't set a release date yet, but I mean it's happening. The first issue is pretty much done. And oh shit, you know. So we're rolling on that too. And that'll great. be a, that'll be a big announcement when we can talk about it. <laughs> yeah. You have a uh, you have a really nice relationship with Image right now. I understand that uh, Vanish is going to be published through Image, mm -hmm. which is uh how did that come about? Like what was the decision making behind that? Cuz I know a couple of the other guys they they made deals with other publishers or they went with uh with another route. But you went like with something that I mean it it feels like an Image book. Right. So, I mean, well, yeah, I mean, I've been obsessed with image from from the onset, you know, yeah, that's yeah. like that was my entry into comics. So uh, I've always wanted to do an image book and it really we never really considered anything else. Um, hmm. You know, I, I think that sometimes it there is no union in comic no. books. Um, so, 
the way the 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 image deal if you can get a book published there is fantastic like they take yeah. no none of your ip nothing like that they're just making money off of you know some money off of publishing it yeah. which is how it should be and so i sometimes i feel like it's kind of you know it's it's incumbent upon creators uh to do something over there so that you can you know everybody should know that if they're you know a bigger name if they're if their books are doing well at marvel and dc then they can go and do something there and make at least that amount of money so that when it comes time to negotiate with the big two that you can you know you you don't have to take something that you feel is inferior to what you could make over there yeah do you feel like that's kind of the um like the formula like where you go to you go to marvel or dc you make a big splash or you make you you make your mark you take the established audience you bring it to an independent publisher you 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 create something that you Mm -hmm. are truly passionate about maybe you might still be passionate about the characters that you worked on with the with those two with the big two but you go to the you go to image or something and you create something that's wholly your own you establish your brand so to speak and then go Mm -hmm. like here i am here's my here's my mountain that i've built right you know and 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 that that you can set that against your value yeah, absolutely. And I think that it's, you know, it's almost like your retirement plan. Like you mm-hmm. have to, you have to try something like that. Cause you know, these, the, the Marvel and DC stuff comes out, but unless you do the dark Knight, where they just yeah. keep printing it, you're not going to make money off of it forever. Like superior Spider-Man for a long time, I got good royalties, but I don't really get royalties from that anymore. We've no all shit. kind of moved past uh, superior Spider-Man at this point. So you know, those have a shelf life, but if you do something at image, you can, you know, sell that forever. And, yeah. uh, you know, I mean the amount of money that, you know, spawn being how, I, what was it? 300 issues. Yeah. Uh, the amount that that's just generating over and over and over is, is nuts. So mm-hmm. now in, in, in the case of image where they publish your book, but you they're on the hook or rather like, it's really you, you reap the whirlwind when it comes to whether it succeeds or fails. Mm-hmm. When it comes to maintaining you in print, do you have any say in maintaining a book's shelf life, so to speak, or does Absolutely. image kind of determine that? You can print it. You can print it as you know in as many different ways as you want. You know, you see that with Kirkman, how he has different compendiums and all yeah. of that type of stuff. Um, so, like, I think that something that would be cool is to like create multiple IPs that then you know you 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 can even like package those together into like you know the ryan stegman collection know. or something yeah, yeah. And, and there's all kinds of stuff that you can do i mean i i could technically even do something at image and kickstart a version you know they have no say in any of that they, they oh, wouldn't sure. even, you know they don't mind that that's that's good marketing for your book so uh, yeah really they they don't you know at any point you can pull your book away from them and they i mean it's really it's really the most creator friendly deal that you could possibly imagine yeah, I remember the days of uh, when uh, when Jeff Smith's Bone was being published through Cartoon Books, which I think was his imprint, where it's mm-hmm. his 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 mm-hmm. publisher. And then I think he just needed he needed a break, and so Image published Bone right. for like a span. Yeah. And then dur- and then after that span, that he was like, I need I needed Image to help me with this period. And then when he didn't need them anymore, he was like, All right, well, back to Cartoon Books. Like right. that was, you know, it was just this really weird nebulous period where it's like well as long as as long as phone bone appears in this gen 13 comic book then i think we're okay <laughs> i remember that issue i'm making a very 13, specific yeah. reference <laughs> because you see gen one. 13 was this comic book series ladies and gentlemen where uh, uh it was it was x-men but not and uh, more sexy <laughs> and uh gen, uh, gen was... 13 is is a book that i'm always like how are they not publishing that like <laughs> see i have the exact same thought i talked to this not to not to brag, but I will. Uh, the, I, I was I was talking to Tom King about this on the last time he was on the show, and I was like, "Why don't they make Gen Thirteen anymore?" Because and he's like, "Because they because it's not because there's nothing there." <laughs> like, but somebody, because got, somebody could find the thing, right? Yeah. No, I mean, like, I think Gen Thirteen has legs, and right. not just eight foot long ones attached to a woman with huge boobs. Like, I yeah. I genuinely think that like Gen Thirteen is like an idea. Yeah. And I'm shocked that DC hasn't just thoroughly exploited it i think they've tried a couple times and it's kind of failed but i always feel like yeah you really need you need the right creative team and you need somebody to find the angle but i think that somebody could i think so i mean you got jim lee there 
you know, yeah. we'll do uh, it. It's time to bust out our Gen 13 pitch. Yeah. We have a, <laughs> tell, our Google, I, I sorry, our Google Drive. There. We blindsided you, Sal. This was all just yeah. so we could do our Gen 13 pitch live. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. here we go. <laughs> Gen 14. Like, oh, but the point that. was that when Gen 13 hit 13 issues, they did like a like an eight issue mini series that happened. So it was like Gen 13 A, B, C, D. I think it yeah. was like four issues yep. where. Incredible. And it was very self-referential. There were like Wizard Magazine references in it, like Garib Shamus appeared in the book, and uh, they were looking All for this kinds like of variant independent stuff that Beam yeah, and, like, was the... in there. And... Because at that time, uh, also Turtles were being published by uh, Image mm-hmm. Comics. Right? Oh yeah, um... I remember that. That because Campbell was like my, you know, one of my favorite oh, artists. Yeah, and uh, I I can still see the the je- the Ninja Turtles eating the pizza at the beginning of the Yellow Brick Road. It, yes, know, that opens the issue. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Yeah, there's also like a huge, they get dumped on by a huge pile of unsold Turtles merchandise. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, if you're interested in Gen 13, go to any dollar bin and you'll be able to get the entire run without any trouble. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, no issues there. Yeah. Did you pick up that, uh, that, that, like, I don't know, it was like a wild storm look back uh uh-huh. book that uh that they made like i think it was like the 20 the 30th anniversary of wildstorm that dc put out where that was like new jim lee art and like a full a fully new gen 13 story like a new issue <laughs> that was wow. drawn by campbell and it, it, it like i bought it for that i was like all right let's see where they're up to and i'm like okay yeah this did not age well <laughs> uh, yeah, that's probably true i reread it. i bought the big compendium recently and i was like oh this is insane <laughs> yeah oh no the, yeah dc put out like a like a collection of like i think like the first like the first mini series and like i think the first two issues of like the new run and it's it's a gorgeous book mm-hmm. oh yeah, yeah. nothing error. nothing look like that on the shelf and I, I the other thing that's most frustrating is that like when you look at like the behind the scenes stuff about like the pre-orders for the first issue and it was like two or three million pre-orders mm-hmm. for the first issue and it's like what a world yeah, what a world <laughs> Yeah. that's insane that's what like, vanish is probably gonna do though so i think so yeah. two or three million yeah yeah wait i don't want to get ahead of myself but maybe two and a half million yeah uh, pre-orders in the first issue and then it only go up mm-hmm. and then well, we can buy our lamborghinis and everything like uh like like the old days of image absolutely <laughs> we got a couple of folks because we is it confirmed ryan is it on the cover of previews oh yeah it's gonna yeah the new, the newest oh, issue yeah. of previews will i don't know if that's when that's out but that'll be the cover is the vanish number you got sure. you got folks seeking out that issue of previews specifically so if wow. that's an indicator to sure. people's interest in in picking it up i think yeah. i need that issue of previews i, I can't <laughs> wait that, that was a, that was a big thing like we kind of could have done it a couple months ago because we've had stuff done but then we were like we're ready and they were like and then we were like, can we have the cover of previews? And they were like, no, not right now. Cause you know, we have these, <laughs> you, should, you should have brought this up a long time ago. And then we were like, well, when can we have it? And then they finally told us and we were like, all right, that's when we'll do it. Cause we want, the, it was just, you know, it's just one of those things. Yeah. No, it vanishes a sick looking book. Uh, and I should like, I actually should have had art ready to go, but I don't. Uh, but the point is like, if you look at the preview over on comicbook.com, and I'll make a link in the description below and I'll drop it in the chat right now. But, um, it's some of your best stuff. Mm. Oh, I'd hope so. I mean, like you can you can see like <clears throat> the passion and the desire to like to really impress and perform. Like mm-hmm. every Stegman book is dope. I remember one of uh, one of my first books I ever saw of yours was a Spider Man book. I'm like, why isn't this fucking dude drawing every Spider Man? But like, I was just, it was and it had that moment. And you know what it was? It was the image influence. I was like, oh my oh, yeah. god, this is, like, it feel it felt like a like a new McFarlane. And I was right. like, oh, I want more. Mm-hmm. And uh, and it was so interesting just to see like occasionally there would be like Stegman like it would just appear like it wouldn't be like oh Stegman's doing a run it was like right. a, a Stegman book until Superior Spider Man where it's like oh right. okay well there yeah. we go right. um, but uh, but your your art is incredible and it really like it, it it scratches an itch that I've been looking for for a long time <laughs> but the Vanish pages it's like oh man like you could see there's like there's a there's a passion here and there's like you 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 are truly at the top of your game in this despite the Thank fact you. that like you were at the top of your game the last time we saw you um, <laughs> I'm always a... at the top cuz I'm always yeah. improving that's how I That's think. right <laughs> there yeah, is we... um I think folks that are subscribed over on klcpress.com have seen the pencils I think for the entirety of issue yeah. 1 um oh, crap. Yeah. And uh, there's there's a great 
sort of suit up montage uh, mm. at the end of the issue uh, and and that last splash page that ryan has at the end of issue one of vanish here is i don't know yeah like you're it's saying so, so it's it's, it's fucking awesome <laughs> <laughs> and we, we haven't even, we haven't even mentioned this is magic and superheroes so it's yeah. like yeah. ryan's yeah. Cra- it's like ryan's craziest <laughs> shit to draw too because mm-hmm. like there, there's there's a superhero veneer and then there's just insane sorcery shit going on so it's got this mm-hmm. really cool aesthetic mm-hmm. yeah yeah and intestines. Don't and the intestines. And intestines. So many intestines. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah, the last time I saw intestines, I think it was when uh, the sentry was ripped in half. Uh, yeah. so. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> Ryan, uh, we we haven't even like talked about it a whole lot over on our stuff, but just out of my own curiosity, sitting here is like how much of like the visuals of the sorcery is you? How much of it is like collaborating with Donnie, or you know, how did you come up with all that? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> uh, I just, you know, he just writes, you know, he does magic, whatever. I mean, there, we, there was just a fight where he was just like, I don't know. He, you know, he uses magic to beat him. So then I, he ended up <laughs> having him manifest like a, uh, um, giant mace that he, it is. uh, you know, made makes on there. And so that's kind of just all, I just make it up as I go. Okay. Love it. Sick. I really like the idea that you're just, that, that, you'll get a script that says, and this guy just gets fucked up. And you're like, <laughs> thank challenge expe- accepted. Here we go. That's pretty much. Yeah. We, it, it gets more and more loose as we go along. So I'm just kind of, you know, and then Donnie that, will be like, Oh, that's cool. I didn't even think about that. And then he, you know, ties that into something else. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now is that because do you find, and I think that we know the answer to this, but I'll ask it anyway to, you know, for, for, for the sake of the show, but uh, you, uh, do you find that, this kind of trust and this kind of like give and take is because you guys are like strong and long-term collaborators and you like, you know each other and he's like, he's able to go, I don't need to like, I I can just put my faith in Ryan and let him go for it without having to like hold it. Do you find that that's the case across the board now? Because like you are kind of like a, like a, a top level comic book artist in the big two anybody you have worked with is at like, the top of well, your segment's game, got it of at the top of your game yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> i mean it just depends on the writer i mean i haven't worked with anybody else in so long that yeah that's true you know it's just we just you know that you sometimes you can't tell where you know the donnie ends and the ryan begins or vice versa like we're just fully collaborating at this point and it's a lot yeah. of you know it's more talk on the phone than it is full script you know yeah i like that that's cool um, how do you, this is just a genuine question for me because I'm just curious about the the process of making comics, but how do you determine, especially in the world of self-publishing and through image and so forth, like how do you determine the length of an issue? I know with, with the first issue, you can kind of play with it because it's like, it's a debut, mm-hmm. uh, but is there like a restriction or can they at this point just go, can you just go like, as long as there's like an even number of pages, we're good. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, we, we, so we did 30 on the first issue and we've, mm-hmm. oh, we've just done, we've just been sticking to 20 on the other ones. Um, yeah. I don't really, we never really discussed it. I'm, I'm sure that if we got to a point where we had, we needed more space, um, we would add the pages, but, um, yeah, so definitely for, for now, you know, we just have been you just have doing, it. yeah. Okay. Cause I'm thinking of like how, um, you know, you look at like streaming and how TV shows have morphed from 22 minutes eight mm-hmm. minutes for commercials right so like oh but if it's the same then it's 40 minutes you know right but with uh with with, with tv it's like oh this episode we need an extra eight minutes so like it's a 46 minute episode or an hour and four minutes episode and you're just like i don't or what it was, doesn't how, matter how long was stranger things this time it's right just like an hour and 15 show. minutes an hour 13 yeah 88 minutes you don't know and mm-hmm. uh and it doesn't matter because you're just it, it's here Mm-hmm. Uh, do you find that that's the case? Like, I mean, with comics, it's it's standardized at, to some point where it's like you've got the like the set number of pages for a particular book to know how to price it. But with Substack, I mean, it's your book. You can mm-hmm. you didn't you you went with Image because like Image was like freeing and because you wanted to work with them. But like the reality is, you could have made the episode like or the issue, you know, like sixty one pages. Like it didn't matter. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's just all a matter of how quickly I can turn stuff around. So, right. You right. know, that that's the only uh, factor is just that if, if there's more pages, it's going to take me longer. So sure. We try to avoid it. I would say, but uh, you know, maybe, maybe we'll actually cut the pages down to about five per issue. 
Okay. <laughs> well, we'll just you... as long as there's 88 variant covers, I think you'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. Ryan, you'd originally said maybe a director's cut sort of situation for issue one. Is that something you guys are still kicking around? Or Oh, for sure. I mean, whether we do it through Image or we do a Kickstarter or something like that, that that's something I personally was always super interested in uh, growing up, like, seeing that type of stuff so yeah you know we'll 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 give everybody you know all kinds of versions of it mm. i mean just seeing jp's inks without color is incredible mm-hmm. so yeah. you Absolutely. know maybe and maybe an artist edition i don't know oh i feel oh, like only. the colors is something really special to to vanish because we've seen you know mm. um you know all your marvel stuff of course mm. but but sonia over on vanish is is bringing like a whole new sort of flavor i feel like to your pencils and uh and jp's inks and everything and uh for folks who have been following ryan and donnie i think it's a a really interesting sort of like switch up and uh, yeah yeah. ryan that that palette she's found for the world with the sorcery and everything does bring so much new new stuff out of your work yeah well well, sonia is somebody that i was pursuing to work with again since i worked with her on renew your vows Mm -hmm. Mm, um so i mean it I really, I, every project that I've done, I've asked Sonia to do it. And for a while she just wasn't, she had gone and she was working for Marvel studios and she wasn't doing stuff in comics. And then it just worked out where I, um, I emailed her about this and she was kind of like, I don't know. And then I was like, well, what if I give you a buttload of money? <laughs> and, uh, and then she was like, okay, you know, and now, now we're like, you know, we're going to be oh. doing a lot of stuff together. So it's going <laughs> that's well. awesome yeah it's awesome yeah i mean she's 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 a color there's there's colorists that are you know they can do really flashy stuff but they don't necessarily pay attention to story and so like you know you have to kind of work with them on that there's some colorists who will turn in stuff that like at the last minute and so some of the pages don't look as good as they should and but she you know that never happens with her she's you know always on top of everything the pages every page is of the same quality as every other page and she's she she wants the script she wants to read the script she wants to know you know exactly what's going on so she can sort of uh, make determinations on how she colors it from that so she's pretty much the perfect colorist <laughs> it's great it, it's it's a it's a it's a powerful looking book it's uh, and and the colors really reflect that so good choice um psycho red in our chat mentioned uh who do i need to bother to get a vanish action figure the design is incredible and i need it Mm -hmm. uh is that something i mean obviously you've been thinking about action figures oh yeah we i mean we talked to (laughs) we we talked to todd a little bit about it and his thing was kind of you can we could commission action figures right now yeah from him um but he he was just saying let it you know let it come out let it become a big deal give it time and then you can actually like, you know, do a line of action figures and, you know, sell the shit out of them. You know, his, so his, his advice was not to, to rush into it until, mm. you know, the book's a massive hit, which it's going to be. Yeah. It's uh, going to be. So more copies was, than was, X-Men as usual, Todd, <laughs> when, whenever you have business advice from Todd, he's always right. So yes, we kind of uh, are going to, you know, wait and see, but hopefully it, it, it is a massive hit and we get to do that at some point. Yeah, no, I, I. But that's every exact, time, that he yeah. said uh, in the question. He said the design is amazing. Well, I, I'll be honest. <laughs> when I designed amazing. the cr- character, all yeah. I was thinking about was that action figure. <laughs> 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 it's like I want that action figure. So. Oh yeah, nice. Uh, yeah. Whenever I think about like how 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 business like works in the comic industry, I I always take it bring it back to Todd because that guy like. He saw th- like he will manipulate a room, uh, you know, in a way where you're like that dude saw that coming a mile away, mm-hmm. and it's just like it, it's it's fascinating to watch him work. Or he's at least truly to... a, just an unbelievable businessman. It's it, you know, you as I have to like I said, I have to do more of that stuff now. Yeah, and I I don't necessarily think I'm terrible at it, but I definitely don't enjoy it. Right, uh, and you can tell that t- like he loves that stuff. He loves, he loves it. All yeah, of it, you know. I remember when he uh, when he bought all those balls uh, mm-hmm. from from <laughs> Mark McGuire and whatnot, and uh, like Wizard Magazine and everybody in the comic industry was just like Todd McFarlane's lost his mind, and then to hear him talk later where he's like, yeah, I was the only toy maker 
who was in the news about sports, right? Mm -hmm. And then got the sports contracts for toys as a result. I'm like, oh my god, yeah, <laughs> like that. It was like an investment, you know? Oh, absolutely, like, yeah. It's just brilliant. Ugh, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. and then the just imagine guy. him applying that level of shrewd business savvy to everything, and it's mm -hmm. like, yeah. I mean, I remember when there was a Cygor figure before Cygor appeared in the comics, and I'm like, what's up with Cygor? And then Cygor would show up, and I'm like, he's a... Okay. I'm yeah. See <laughs> yeah, it's almost like, you know, how He-Man... Uh, oh, yeah. He-Man was just a toy fan. Toy commercial. And, you know, he kind of did that with his comic, and... That's right. It's perfect. No, well, it was brilliant, and there, and I have them all, <laughs> mm -hmm. because, you know, they are undisputedly dope. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm. Kingsport Cal says, uh, Ryan, how did you know that you could draw? When you discovered it, did you practice a lot? And finally, what's your favorite character to draw? So how did I know I could draw? Um, I just did it all the time. And then, you know, you do get positive reinforcement. People are like, and then, you know, sometimes adults would be like, wait, like this is cool. You, well, not just, they'd be like, this is like really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, that kind of reinforcement always helps and you, you realize that you have something that you can do well. But I mean, I just enjoyed doing it as well. Like my sisters and I, that's what we did. You know, my dad worked for um, General Motors and you remember dot matrix printers. Of course. He would bring home the reams of the, the paper uh, and it would have like, you know, whatever accounting data because he was an accountant on one side. And then mm. the back would be um, just blank and we would just sit there and you would like just unwind it you draw keep pulling it out and it would just like snake around the room you know and you just keep doing that all all day and uh, and so I guess I you know I practiced but I didn't think of it as practice as a kid I just was like this is just what I want to do is draw stuff yeah um, and then he asked my favorite character to draw is probably you know if it's if it's not you know Oliver Harrison from Vanish right you know anything Vanish related because, yeah. um, you know, obviously that stuff is all near and dear to my heart. Then, you know, the, the true answer for Marvel and DC is Spider-Man for sure. Yeah. Just is. It always will be, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and you're pretty good at it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. yeah you've really, you've really refined your craft when it comes to Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> do you, uh, <clears throat> would you say that Vanish is the dream project? Or do you feel like mm -hmm. there's something else that you just like, that, that is in the back of your mind and you're like... But one day I'm going to get to that one. No, I, I think it, the the ultimate goal for me uh, when I started out in comics uh, or even as like a 15 year old when I was like, I want to draw comic books was a creator owned book that, you know, that I owned and, you know, created from the ground up. So that yeah. this is the ultimate uh, goal. Maybe not just one creator owned book. Maybe it's, sure. you know, like I said, I have another one coming out and all these things. Um but yeah, to, to be able to control your own destiny and, and create everything from the ground up is really, uh, you know, that that was the ultimate goal for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember last time we talked, um, we talked about how you were really influenced by uh, the image revolution and the like, just this like kind of dreamlike existence of, you know, like each of these artists breaking out, doing their own thing and then mm -hmm. developing their own studios and just like doing whatever they want and like getting a like bring in whoever and and do and just work on these fabulous projects that were, never came out or took like eight months to come out. But uh, do you feel like you're getting to that point, like where it's like, hey, this is or or, or yeah, like is that still a thing that you're like, I really want to do that? No, I don't want to. Okay, uh, <laughs> like I, I, I and I. I've started to, I mean, we had a, we did a, um, a live stream with Todd and he kept saying, you know, the thing, the truth is I just want to make art. He likes mm -hmm. the, he loves business and all that stuff, but he, but he just wants, he doesn't, he loves drawing. He loves inking. He loves, you know, making toys and all that stuff. Like the actual art of it. I was really actually kind of surprised how much he mentioned it um, because yeah. he doesn't get to do it much, but mm. you, you know, you see, um, like Jim Lee, he had Wildstorm, and I think at some point he was like, "I just want to draw comic books," you know. Mm. Uh, and I think all these. I just was talking to Steve McNiven about up this at a show, um, where he said he at some point he started a studio, and you know he had young guys in there, and he was just like, in the end, I was just like, I just my favorite thing to do is draw comics, and that's what kind of I think that we all come back to. Yeah. Now, obviously, 
the amount of money they were generating would be worth it. Um, sure. But I, I would just like to make comic books in my basement, you know, be I'm home. I'm with my kids and my, my wife. And, uh, just that's, that's my, that that's my happy place. So yeah. That's the end anything game. that starts to get in the way of it. I, I, I really find myself getting frustrated with. Yeah. You pull back from, yeah. Uh, Jay Pug asked, uh, what are some of your favorite variant covers that you've done? Uh, he, he, he references your Dark Ages number four cover uh, with Miles and Venom and Carnage. Big fan of all of your work. Uh, well, we talked about like how I, I feel like I'm always the next thing that I'm doing is the best thing that I've yeah. um, done. I mean, not always that, but uh, like recent things I feel like are the best things that I've done. So um, I do love some of those Dark Ages covers. I really like the um, vi- the Vision one was super cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, I'm a big fan of my own Miracle Man variant uh, oh, that I did with with Venom. I, I love that one. Yeah. Um, I've done one. I can't. I guess. I, I mean, I can just say it's it's a Miles Morales um, image that hasn't been shown yet that I, I'm really proud of. Mm. Uh, hmm. I maybe did a Mandalorian one. I don't know. That's oh, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> so lots of lots of stuff coming up that hasn't come out yet, but um. Yeah, I really, you know, the stuff that I've been doing lately, I feel like I've really kind of found my groove. And Yeah. Um, you know, I've been doing so many covers for Marvel right now. True. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, should we talk about the Miracle Man elephant in the room? Sure. Uh, the fact that, uh, you know, Miracle Man is coming back to comics in its own mm-hmm. way. And uh, you do this dope uh, Miracle Man variant cover with Venom attacking Miracle Man, which is like an image that I don't think anyone <laughs> ever thought they were ever going to see. Yeah, but if they were going to see it, I'm glad that it's a Stegman image. <laughs> yeah. That's, that was a super fun thing to be, you know, when they offered me Miracle Man, because at first, you know, I love Miracle Man. Yeah. Uh, and they offered it. And I was like, Miracle Man and Venom. Like I, is this going to be too silly? Right. But then I kind of found the angle on it and uh, I, I actually ended up really enjoying doing it, but uh, yeah, that was, that was an interesting project. And I kind of talked to you guys about this off air. Exactly. I, I will say I was announced on this miracle man zero issue. Uh, that's not necessarily true. <laughs> uh, I did not. I was, uh, I was caught a little uh, blindsided by that. I don't have, you know, but I, I actually told them I was like, but I would like to do something with that. So yeah, you know, hopefully that works out. But has that ever know. happened before? Yeah, yeah. There, I've been, I've even been listed. There was an issue of Inhuman that Pepe Larraz drew where I was just fully credited as the artist, and I was like, no. I mean, <laughs> there's worse artists to you know get the credit for. It's true, but like I, in the book or just like a solicitation. Oh, the cover. Yeah. Oh, oh my Jesus. god. Yeah. Wow. Like, oh no. Uh, Very good. I felt, I felt so bad for Pepe, but. Um, great. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's comics are produced at a breakneck speed, yeah. and um, I think that these things, you know, you could get frustrated about them, but they're really a little bit of part of the charm of comic books. They just keep happening very quickly, you know. Yeah. And so, um, you know, th- this one came out and kind of like I said, hopefully I end up in it, you know. But right. Um, I was not aware of it. Yeah, it was, but you it was actually pretty this. funny. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna pull that up because it's just it's just too cool. Very um, good, God. very and, good. Uh, I I love the idea of like <sighs> Miracle Man on the outside of comic of a comic book page. That's great. And just kind of like like yeah. There's... Well, you got to be meta when it's Miracle Man, right? Exactly. And there, well, there's so much story, and like this is not a story. There's mm-hmm. nothing happening here, but it's telling a story. Yeah. That mm-hmm. uh, I kind of want to read now. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> who, who did colors on that, Ryan? Frank Martin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks yeah. Good stuff. It's very good. It's so yeah, it's a, good. Yeah. one of his better ones too. Yeah, yeah. it's really cool. Um, speaking of some Marvel stuff, Ryan, you sent me and Ethan a uh, pitch. Are you allowed to? Do you want to talk about that at all? <laughs> I mean, you you've talked just, about it on your social like, media. No. <laughs> yeah, I'll do, I it. I have a pitch in. But I mean that doesn't mean it's going to happen. But, no, I mean, sure, yeah. But you I know, mean, to anybody, generate the. Hype. I don't want to. I don't want to say too much about it. But people did see it on my social media, and then it mm-hmm. kind of did catch Marvel's eye as something they might be interested in. So mm-hmm. I've 
I fleshed it out some more, and hopefully that goes. But we'll God, see. you have so many irons in the fire, oh, Ryan. I know. There's not even enough room for all the irons. <laughs> Maybe this is why I wake up feeling like I'm choking all the time. <laughs> that might be it. <laughs> that might be it. Oh, that's an incubus, actually, Ryan. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. Get that checked out. I learned about yeah. those from uh, Nathan for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so on a scale of one to Morbius, how much did you guys enjoy the Morbius movie? I never saw the movie. I refuse. <laughs> Let's yeah, go me too. Out. Um, Ethan and I watched it by completely legal means. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> yes, that's, and that's the best way to do it. You paid a lot uh -huh. of money to see it. Yep. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like and, we talked about Morbius so much in the lead up to Morbius. Well, you heard, did. You heard Ryan, Ryan, like a whole Jared Leto yes, section on your yes, show. Yeah, Let's, Let's go, go Leto. Leto. Is but Ryan like, like just never wanted to hear about it again. I love how much he didn't like it. It's yeah, it was so well, great to watch. You're like, okay, let's talk about Leto, and he's like, okay. I <sighs> think that's that's been like the punchline we knew has been coming for the Let's Go Leto like running gag. Like the whole time was that when Morbius finally came out, we knew Ryan wasn't gonna give a shit about right. it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. we we did we didn't however know that everyone in the world would start making Morbius. Jokes, yeah, no, it was sort of shocking yeah. that it like it like yeah it became. The, the 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 big punchline um mm -hmm. yeah and, which is crazy because the movie is not that interesting it's blissfully um, <laughs> short i will say it's very oh, short that, i would almost prefer so oh, you haven't seen it either so? no no oh. i would no i would never i uh, i mean it's i don't it's like incredible to, i don't like to pay for things i don't want to see in the world <laughs> us neither yeah <laughs> <laughs> but i also hate I, I value my time more than money so i like true I'm not going to spend time watching a Morbius movie. Mm. Uh, correct. Um, That's the correct well, yeah, answer, I mean, Sal. Right? That, just, no. that is to say that we loved it. It was fantastic. Oh, naturally, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Sony, Lee, if you're listening, Morbius 2, Morbin time. Let's uh, let's get that rolling. <laughs> well, now we got to yes, get sir. our Craven bit going. Yeah, yeah I'm craving the, some Craven. The, oh, man. I'm craving some Craven. All right. Well, I guess we got to buy that off you. So, <laughs> it's, it's oh, good. man. Yeah. No, that's not working out. Um, but they don't know. They you know, Madam Web also can't wait for that. <laughs> so uh, Ryan, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you with with a couple of uh, Wizard Magazine born questions from the interviews from the back mm -hmm. uh, because I love those questions uh, and they did all the work for me about 30 years ago. So now I can just uh, reap the whirlwind. So no, uh, I love Wizard. Yeah, I do. I do. Uh, but uh, what is your what's your favorite comic of all time? If you could think of one. Uh, to read would be uh, the anatomy lesson from Swamp Thing Saga oh, of the Swamp Thing. Yeah, I've read that so many times. Uh, it's so good. And then yeah. um, the most important one to me is probably um, Spawn forty six or forty seven, whichever one it is. It's Capullo. That was the one that um, I when I. I bought that issue and I was like, this is what I want to do with my life was draw comic yeah. books. And, uh, it, it's just, you know, it's always around. I've always, I, I, I'm looking right now. I know that it's somewhere near my desk. Uh, <laughs> it's just like the comic that I've seen the most in my life and it, you know, changed my life. So yeah, there you go. I'd never seen anything like, 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 like Capullo and yeah. Capullo provided a uh, variant cover for vanish. He absolutely did. Yes. Which is really exciting as well. Yeah, um, that's a it's awesome. I haven't that's got to blow your mind, to, like because you love his work from Spawn to see him draw your character. It, it it's super cool, and it kind of was the moment where I was like, yeah, this character works. This is a cool, you know, you have to see somebody else do it to really get it. But he also, I was just so thrilled that he really like went all out on it, you know, because yeah. he didn't have to, you know, he could do something, take the easy way out, but he uh, he really you know, went, went ham on it and it looks yeah. great. Uh, what is besides vanish? What's your favorite work of your own? I mean, cause we know the vanish is because it's the most recent thing and it's obviously the best thing you've ever done. Uh, but, uh, but what's your favorite work of your own that you've probably, that the, you've probably the podcast, right? Yeah. Probably, the podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> probably yeah. the podcast every uh, day. You're like, are we doing another episode? Yeah, please. Like, can, no, I Ryan, show up? <laughs> can I, can I be somewhere? Um, <laughs> I, uh, I would say, I mean, I'm still super proud of Superior Spider-Man. Um, I'm, I really enjoy uh, the first issue of Absolute Carnage. I think that I yeah. went all out on that, and then the last issue of King in Black. So, um, 
those are all my favorites, I would say. Yeah, that image of Venom wielding that freaking axe. Oh, yeah, just, that's so fun. The stuff of legend, man. A guy that I met at a convention made a 3D... Um, and he 3D modeled it, and he's going to make a 3D oh. print of it, and I'm going to buy the shit out of that. So Yeah. <laughs> like a big one or like a bust of like that moment? Oh, no, it's, a, it's the it's full the act. act. It's, it's the, the exact act. scene, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. The, the, the things they can do with these with these like tiny ass 3D printers, I'm just yeah. like, I, I would never be able to get close to making that, but I want it so bad. I saw a dude who made a, um, what was it, the Moon DeLorean costume where it's oh, really? Moon Knight and the Mandalorian at the same time, and I'm like, he just 3D printed it. <laughs> yeah, and he's just like, here's this helmet, and you know, I'm just like, okay, this is this is the world we're living in, mm -hmm. where it's like, oh, I can dream it, so here it is now. As long yeah. as I have like enough crazy glue and patience, yeah, it's gonna happen. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want that. I've seen um, there's like there's booths at the there's a booth at least at uh, at every convention where it's like you see these like things that you always imagined, but now are physically grabbable, yeah. and it's like mm -hmm. like Mjolnir and Stormbreaker and that Venomax. Once that gets out there and they can start vacuum forming that shit, you mm -hmm. can see that Venomax everywhere. <laughs> yeah, that'd be <laughs> amazing. Which I would, yeah, which I would also like to buy because holy crap. The only thing is it'd need to have like LEDs inside of it because like of it'd have to have like that glow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Listen, uh, we got a Ryan Stegman Venom figure. We got a Null figure. It's a good time for Ryan got Stegman. Some fun That's true. You got, the, you got the Null figure. Yeah, finally. Mm -hmm. That time. I don't have one. Have they, have, <laughs> has anybody received them yet? I don't know if it's out yet. And I haven't really bought one, but uh, you know, it exists. And that's, yeah. that's the important thing. Mm hmm Where's the is there a null statue yet? We talked about this. There is not a null statue. That, that same guy though did make a null um, 3D print that I actually. You're reminding me. I need to get back to him because I'm gonna buy it from him and nice put it up here somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it's just like you know. Every time you see null, it's like that image of him on the throne, and I'm like, mm -hmm. where's the diamond statue of him on the mm -hmm. throne? It's That's just like, what this guy made. I mean, it's an That's incredible it. looking. It's just... <laughs> uh, what is a superpower that you would like to have? uh flight i guess or yeah. just like being able to teleport from one place to another so you yeah. can just kind of go anywhere mm -hmm. that's my power too that's so funny um <laughs> at least you didn't make it sad most people who i ask the question are like i wish i could talk to the dead oh and i'm like jesus yeah. thank you um <laughs> what was your favorite toy as a child oh he-man come on <laughs> no. which he-man uh, well i i think that the coolest thing was having castle gray skull oh, yeah. um you know that was like the most important thing in the world to me but uh i still is it was it moss man was yeah. one of my favorites because he had the texture mm -hmm. uh was it and then there was whiplash is that no not whiplash the one that you could you would spin his body and then it would whip the other way around <laughs> oh okay you know yes that? yeah like he he spun like in a yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i remember that character i don't remember his name but yes i know exactly what you're talking about and then so I was, yeah, I had, I mean, I had all the He-Man stuff. And then the, um, I had my um, He-Man sword, which I got because I, I was uh, using pacifiers for far too long. I was like three years old. Mm -hmm. And they, my parents told me if I got rid of my pacifiers, I could Aww. get a, the He-Man sword. And, uh, <laughs> they said, my mom, we don't know, my mom doesn't know what age I was, but she said she knows that I was using pacifiers too long because I got home and I put the I read the instructions and put the batteries in myself. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have okay. a very relevant prop for this. I'm going to step away for two seconds because it's like there's no other situation where this will ever come up again. So hang on one second. All right. And now you're patterning your body after He-Man. Is that right? Yeah. You're yeah. a tonal my only Peloton. <laughs> Gonna get yourself a big sword. Not only did I grow up with that sword. Oh, oh, my God. oh that's yeah. the exact one. But yeah, I. Oh uh, my God. I grew up with this sword as well. It's the New Adventures of He-Man sword from 1989. I found this at a garage sale two or three weeks ago. Oh um, my God, that's amazing. I got it for a dollar. <laughs> Do you need my address? Right. Like, <laughs> this thing, and of course, like the batteries work and oh yeah like you That's yeah sick. you can fire it and it has like motion in it wow oh my, oh god. my god it's 
it's amazing and it was <laughs> made like 35 years ago that's pretty and sweet. it still works that's incredible that is gonna make noise the whole time now <laughs> sorry <laughs> but yeah I, I i found that that and uh the batwing uh plane from the kenner batman line from 89 yeah. mm-hmm. again a, a dollar this lady was just like <laughs> i want it all out of my house and i'm like this is intact <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> take um and what is your favorite toy now now that you're an adult that's a good question um i do have a bunch of um toys back here that you can't really see uh i have a lot of the um but there's mostly statues. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Does PlayStation count as a toy? <laughs> yeah, I think so. It's a the, game station. PlayStation. I mean, come on. Yeah. Did you get a PS5, Ryan? I did not. I'm, I'm oh. not willing to work hard to get this. this <laughs> Me neither. My wife, thankfully, was. So we have that. Very nice. Um, yeah. It was like this weird thing where like Sony was like, we're selling them now. You know, like get into a waiting room, and she she was like, "There's no way." Click the thing, and like she was third in line. Wow! Mm-hmm. So it was like no scalpers, no bullshit. Just purchased it directly from the manufacturer, and it mm-hmm. worked well, out great. I will tell you, to. Spider-Man, Spider-Man looks and amazing Wolverine. Mm-hmm. It's coming down the pipeline. Oh my! Yeah, yeah. In like ten or fifteen years, I can't wait to play it. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I did. Yeah, no. I did announce my on the live stream. Remember, I announced my retirement from Elden Ring. Yeah. Oh, good for you. Yeah, you did. I retired. I couldn't. I was too bad at it. I wasn't getting any better, and uh, I refused to fight bosses thirty to thirty to fifty times just to beat them. So, yeah, my my wife is playing Elden Ring every day, and uh, I'm just like, I don't understand you. <laughs> is she good at it? She she I'm sure she would say she isn't, but uh, I think she is. I mean, she's still playing it, like, right. and she isn't just playing the same thing over and over again because she keeps dying. So, like, I'm right. assuming she's good at it. Right. <laughs> but I don't know, man. Uh, the last time that you went trick or treating, what did you go as? Well, I mean, I go with my kids. Well, yeah. I, do you... I go as a dad. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> uh, actually, I don't remember the last time I went. I do like I can remember costumes. I do remember like being a clown. My mom always wanted us to be clowns, which was annoying. <laughs> Some people say uh, you're still in that costume, Ryan. <laughs> can you can you get him out of here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me just boot. Uh... <laughs> um, I right there. I was I was definitely He Man. <laughs> Uh, at some point, I do. Yeah. I am. Tomorrow is my birthday. I'm turning the big four one. Wow! Happy birthday, man! Uh, and we are going to have a '90s party. So I, I do have like a '90s costume for that, meaning nice. like wearing clothes that I would have worn in 1999. <laughs> right. So uh, it'll be a shirt that says like the clowns talk to me, and it'll yeah, be like Jinkos and uh... oh yeah, yep, it, yeah, a hemp necklace for. No good reason. Oh yes. Uh, will you will you atta- will you attach a, wa- a chain to your wallet so that no one can oh, steal it from you? I should do that. I'll have to wear a backwards fitted cap. And I, I need I need uh, I couldn't find um, clip on hoop earrings, which is something I really needed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I kind of want to. I, I remember like long after college being like, we should throw like a prom because mm-hmm. I hated all the. I was at, but now I like these people, so we should do one. Right, <laughs> it didn't happen, but like, yeah, be pretty fun. cool. Maybe yeah. one of the uh, you know we we like talking about VIP events for the KLC Press subscribers and stuff. So maybe maybe one of them is a '80s '90s themed should, KLC Press if, event. If we ever can do like a really big meetup, we should make it a a costume party of some sort for sure. Oh, absolutely, yes, that'd be fun. Like a big if furry you, if like... orgy, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Perfect. Mm. Um, you know what you should do is just crash a furry convention and just, oh, okay. mm-hmm. that'll save some time. You just have a booth at like the fur fest. <laughs> I don't have to crash those. I'm invited. All right? <laughs> yeah, I'm a special exhibitor. You never know because you're yeah. in persona. Yeah. I've seen your saber tooth variants. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, and what is your favorite snack? Oh, man. Um, I like, uh, uh, pistachios a lot if that counts sure um, and if are we talking candy i mean i'm gonna say pistachios for now yeah that's, I think that, it's just that when is you're the thing like, i reach for yeah when you're hankering you're just like i need something Boom. yeah mm-hmm. yeah that's the number that's my go-to is pistachios for sure mm. very good very good nice it's a solid choice 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so we've got uh, we got Miracle Man. We've got uh, Van uh, Vanish. Is there anything? I mean, like obviously, besides the pitches and the and the other thing, is there anything like w- like coming out within the next few months that you want to like start people's excitement for? Oh, uh, there's something on my desk right now that I absolutely cannot talk about that I'm very <laughs> excited about. So if you're uh, saying that if your camera was just a little lower, we'd we'd get an exclusive uh, if I scoop. I were to take this screen, you're seeing the back of this screen, and turn it around, you would see something that would blow your mind. People got to <laughs> zoom in on the reflection back and, there, right? Oh, oh shit! <laughs> no, oh no, my no. god! <laughs> I think you're good. I think you you're can. fine. I can't see shit. Yeah, you might be able to see. I don't think we can see anything. You're can good. you guys imagine if we could see that screen? Oh my yeah. god, the things we would know. You two know it already. I don't know. I don't know. Excellent theater. I don't think we do. I don't think we do. Ryan doesn't tell us anything contrary to probably belief. Oh no. Uh oh. Oh, he got too nervous. (laughs) That was Marvel. Marvel was like, get the fuck out of here. No. There he is. He's back. He's back. I just said I I did say something funny. I did say that we don't speak unless we're streaming so that's, that's right. kind of true <laughs> <laughs> that's why they're here now it's like we just you're like we needed to coordinate emails and stuff yeah <laughs> and, uh, and Ryan, Ryan, we gotta speak talk to, to you after this uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> he just leaves <laughs> <laughs> oh man well that's fantastic man i'm really excited for more uh when what's the what's the final order cutoff for vanish for those who are out there uh who want to get it in physical I don't know. <laughs> cool. But you, you can sign up for KLC Press for the you know the memberships mm-hmm. that that you get. You're going to get the first issue with a bunch of different covers. Um, but the the I know that it goes. I don't even what is it like a month and a half after yeah. it solicits. So it's, the solicit is live, I think, and I think you can order it. If you can't order it, you will be able to any day. And then so a month and a half from, you know, mm-hmm. that yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, pre-order your books, ladies and gentlemen, because that's the only way they survive. It's a stupid way to do it, but I understand that that's the only way to do it. So mm-hmm. you got mm-hmm. to pre-order your books. Um, make sure to do that. It tells the publisher that they want more of them. Uh, right. But uh, Ryan, thank you so much for being here, man. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, uh, Stan. What uh, d- pimp the the podcast and the and, yeah. and KLC Press, KLCPress.com? klcpress.com KLC you head it over we got a bunch of uh fun stuff like we've been saying uh ryan is doing stegman speaks is edu series as we're calling it so yep. if you have a burning art question for ryan Stegman, you can ask us on our social media with hashtag stegman speaks and you will head over to klcpress.com to see that uh, come to fruition um and of course your vanish sneak peeks like he's talking about um we also do our own weekly live stream typically over uh over there so you can find all the links for that where ryan we'll will be doing do... one tonight we'll be doing one tonight 6 p.m est um and speaking of i was checking your live chat sal and justice yeah. rice says klc have sal on a live stream and we would love to anytime i'd love yeah. to join you yeah anytime man i mean we'll I'm, I'm, I'm the... free. you guys should be sending them the stream yard links but you guys don't do anything <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. Well, I'm just sitting here in a black void. I don't do anything. <laughs> Ryan likes to do some sketches on stream. This Miles Morales is a piece mm-hmm. from that. This Daredevil. And folks can sign up and uh, enter to uh, win those pieces. So if Griffin, you think... can you hold those further away from the camera, please? <laughs> <laughs> There's your daredevil, Ryan. Said oh. you draw a pretty good daredevil. Oh man! Um, yeah, literally just just about every week we give away a Ryan Stegman piece. So yeah, yep. hop on yeah. over, give it a subscribe. I, I just saw your uh, your Morpheus, and damn! Mm. Oh yeah, that was fun. That was yeah, fun. there it is, right there. There it further, is. Further, further, Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. It's pretty good. Um, so yeah, KLCPress.com for. Uh, even more Ryan Stegman, because you know you need more of it in your life. And more me and Ethan, I guess. I don't know. If no you like type, Ladies and gentlemen, just go into the comments and you'll see a link to klcpress.com. Check it out and uh, check out everything that these gentlemen have to offer. Ryan, thank you so much for being here. It's always been a pleasure. Thank uh, you. Can't wait to see what's next. Obviously, uh, whatever it will be, will be better than the last thing. Uh, and uh, we'll see you guys next time on another episode of the Elseworlds Exchange. So long, everybody. Bye. Bye.